So you became Muslim, alhamdulillah, yeah? Yes, uh, mashallah. So, so walk, walk me through your journey, because you said your name, sorry, it was Stewart. It was Stewart. And, and, and then you changed your name to, to Yusuf, right? Yusuf, yeah. Which obviously in Islam you don't have to change your name, but it's good, it's not bad, it's, it's a nice thing to do, yeah? So maybe sometimes it's a sign of completely denouncing the past and then coming with a new page, you know? Yeah. So walk me through, because I'm interested, mashallah, you're dressed in an Islamic way, you know? Uh, this is from uh, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi, mashallah, yeah. you went there? No, no, I, I, bought, I bought it off the uh, internet. Mashallah, it looks course. nice on you, mashallah, may Allah so bless you. So, how did you become Muslim? How was, it, how was your journey, basically? Well, um, I joined the army when I was 19. I just left school. You joined the army? Uh, the British the UK. army in the UK, yeah. Uh, I went across to Germany. I did about two years training almost. By the time I did my signal trade training, basic training, everything in between. Course in Germany, but a few months were like, oh, we ship me off to Iraq. Don't want to get into, uh, so I don't want to get into, like uh, too many politics because we all know about the fake this and the fake that and all the rest. Yes. But we, we got sent there for oil and whatever else. And, um, and I found the Iraqi people so friendly. Uh, I know they were like slightly different, some of them in the south and different things. Yes. We were yes. so friendly as a people and very yes. welcome and, and you know, and thankfully I didn't have to slot anybody when I was there, which was always a good thing, Alhamdulillah. And uh, I came back from Iraq. So did you fight when you were there? When you were there? I was attached to the cavalry, the QRH, the all his R's. And I did Brigade HQ. I was in charge of like movement control. I was in charge of when the, the sneaky PTs were doing their missions. And I had to give, send help out to the grid okay. and things like that. So okay. it's a very responsible job. You send that help to the wrong place and... Uh, people die. People die, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it seems yeah. like a, it's a very serious thing. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And then you were from 19, you said? I was about 19, 20 when I was over there, yeah. You were 20? Yeah. And you were doing that serious job with 20 years old? Yeah. That's, that's, that's surprising to me, you know? Because I think that you have to give you a bit more experience to put someone in that position, wouldn't you agree? What do you think about that? I mean, the army here should be more responsible with the person who has this type of job. I think it has to be a little bit older. What do you think? I would, I would say so as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised yeah. that they put someone 20 years old and he's doing yeah. that type of job, you know? I kind of had an old head on me even from like a young age. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what so how was your experience there? What, what would you say about the army? Uh, uh, I remember the police station getting blown up when I was there. And we police station? The three police stations within 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, vehicle IEDs. And obviously, Wade's help set up their map boards, set up the radios. Um, they brought out the maps. And one of the guys next to me says, Oh, I'm not eating them after they've been touching it. I said, Oh, I'll have yours as well. So I'm sitting there eating some nice Iraqi kebab, etc. And then obviously, these. Uh, so you enjoyed your time? It's, uh, it, had, it had its rough points. I mean, I fell asleep on top of Saddam's palace. <laughs> in the midday sun, and uh, obviously being, uh, being uh, quite pale, it was... Uh, That's very dangerous, isn't it? Uh, I was like a lobster, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, is, it sounds very, very strange to me because war is, is a little bit more brutal than what you're saying, you know? Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's had its moments, yeah, riots and people, you know, kicking yeah. off. So when you when you were there, uh, you were fighting against the people. You said you said you saw, you thought that they were friendly. You, you saw, your perception of them that they were friendly people, that was your perception as someone who's going with, with for the, the most, army. For the most part, the ones the who like, uh, like militias or whatever, but like, yes. you get a lot of like, kids asking for war, and chocolate and um, there's one kid pulled a big knife out of me like this and I was out of control I'm like and he, he was just like oh I sell you I sell you five dollar five dollar whatever you know God bless him you know and oh he wanted to sell it he wanted to sell it yeah it was an American uh, like uh, yes uh, being at the knife, yeah. okay and then you came back from the army you were saying sorry yeah. and, I, and I got back to Germany and um, I was a bit stressed yeah. uh, I mean I'd had some leave in between so I went from 52 degrees heat in Iraq and I went back to Newcastle it's Christmas time it's snowing and I'm like mm. and then I uh, I got back to Germany I was just drinking and I was with women all the time it was like I was trying to like I don't know whatever it was affecting us I was trying to and I left the army uh, that happens a lot wouldn't you agree people do it they try They try. I think to forget what they saw in the in the war what they what they saw in these yeah. places by drinking or women going into material let's say, yeah yeah just completely forgetting but it, it never helps isn't it yeah. Yeah. so you're saying sorry yeah. and then uh, I went back to like Newcastle there Area, and I had some like like fraud and some other things happen to me and all the rest by like some civvies and all the rest. And I ended up living homeless in Keswick in the Lake District under an army poncho with a little hexi cooker. So I'm sat there for seven weeks cooking up like uh, full Monty breakfast and a little bean yes. tins of tins. I was like, uh, 
uh, subhanallah. And then I ended up living at um, uh, Whitechapel. Whitechapel. Oh, so now this is a, the now this is a turning point, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> you, you you went to Whitechapel. Then what happened? Um, like some of the guys I lived with, was, they had problems with some of the locals, but that's because they would get drunk up and then yeah. they would make like race, racial slurs. And I was like, well, what, what, what do you expect? You know, you're, you're like disrespectful. To people. When was that? What year was that? 2005. And, and, and they used to give me 20 pounds a week to live on in London. So I had to go to like Methodist churches to get breakfast. I'd have to go to here, salmon shops. So well, that time, Whitechapel did not have as much as many Muslims as it does have today, isn't it? It wasn't quite as many. No, no, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you know kind of the average? Who was more? Who was, who was, who was less? There was more basically English people. Or there's more foreigners at that time. Do you know? Uh, I think there's probably more Muslims there now. More Muslims still. I okay. So, okay. As far as far as I, yeah. Mm. And then I went. I went back in the army. I oh. Was, I went in the infantry this time. Well, how old were you? Were you that time? I was 29. 29. Okay. Something like that. And uh, I went back in. Could be 20 years. Yes. And uh, I um, I went to the Catrick for the infantry training, and it's brutal. It was a 64 man platoon when I first joined. By the time I left, there was 16 of us, a professional athlete from Nigeria, and two professional rugby players from Fiji, and, and a little old me, you know what I mean? Just, but uh, I snapped my right tibia, and they had me doing the assault course, and the steeplechase, the paratroopers do, tanked up with painkillers, but we were, we were like a hairline fracture, so. That seems a bit difficult, doesn't it? Yeah, it was, it was, it was a struggle. But, uh, how, long, how long did you spend in the army next time? The second, the second time? time was only about five and a half months. Five and a half? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I've, I've, I've done my time. I'm not did like, you do that with, with choice? You wanted to go back to the army in another yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. I, I was dying to go back in again. I've, what was the reason? What was your mentality? Of wanting to go back? Who knows? Maybe it was just because I, I was young. I, it was the one thing I'd enjoyed. So, I thought I'd go back with it. Okay. Okay. You know, okay. And then I came out of there and uh, I was in the Merchant Navy. So, I worked on container ships. Went from Hong Kong, past Taiwan to Long Beach, California. But whilst on Christmas leave from the Merchant Navy, no one ever laughed, got the little metal thing, like, not metal, a key ring thing. Yeah. I went across to the French Foreign Legion, the Legion of Strangers. Okay. So there's Chinese, Russians, there's big, a lot of Algerians, whatever, from the you know, French colonies in Cameroon, etc. And uh, that was quite an interesting experience. I passed the selection, but then somebody said to me, like, some American, he was like, why are you here when you've got your, your Merchant Navy career? Yes. So I went back to the Merchant Navy. Because I'd been in the army, this guy from Northern Ireland had took offence, and there was a bit of a yeah, there was a bit of an altercation, shall we say? So that was my seventy thousand pound of career that right down this morning. And then after that, I um, I worked. I did a close protection course. Close protection yeah. and surveillance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to fire like a rem and seven twenty pump action. How is that training, by the way? Because I'm interested. Because I did some security in the past before, right? So you got to do a door supervisor. I know the training and this and that. Yeah. How, what kind of training did you, did, you, did you need for that? Or do you need certain qualifications, like to be in the army or something? Like that? No, well, no. You, as even as a, like a civilian, you pay about three grand, four grand. So it's five grand you're doing in South Africa, somewhere fancy like that. You go and you do like car stuff. You do surveillance, how to follow somebody, um, where somebody would likely set up an ambush. Um, you do a bit hand to hand stuff. We had this uh, Sunderland guy, a Macam as we call him, and uh, he was just this wee little guy, and he'd been in the Philippines doing like a screamer uh -huh. and the sticks with the different yeah, elbows yeah, and stuff yeah, as well. Yeah. So we sort of looked at him, we're like, yeah, really? <laughs> and then once he started going with some of the guys, we're like, oh, oh, oh you know. Uh, he's yeah. dangerous, isn't he? Uh, yeah. So then you did close protection, and then what? And then I worked. Um, I did. I worked at this film set of Snow White and the Huntsman. That was up in Ambleside in the Lake District. So they had all the little. Um, Fantasy dwarfs, so I'm not being a thingy against people who are small here. Yes. Fantasy dwarfs, so leather armor and spears and all the rest, okay. and, the, uh, and the Snow White uh, stunt double, etc. Yeah. Uh, and that was good fun. I worked at Bournemouth Fair Show. I, I saw it seemed like you went all over the world, didn't uh, it? I <laughs> just went all over Scot uh, Scotland and England, yeah. and it was great, yeah, yeah. loved it. And then, how did, how, what was the starting point for you to get to know Islam or to, or to learn about their religion? How, how did that start? Um, it started, well, about. Uh, uh, about a year ago, for whatever reason, I stopped eating pork. I must have been reading stuff about why it's bad, etc., etc. Okay. I grew up here for some reason, and it was like loads of stuff. People kept saying to me, like, are you Muslim? And I was like, no, no, no. So, but then, but... Because you said you don't eat pork, they thought you were Muslim. Yeah, they, they, they assumed, yeah. Which is an interesting thing, because you see, this tradition is in, in the Jewish tradition. Some Christian Orthodox, they do it. Yeah. But the people who are actually known to keep this tradition and practice it properly are the Muslims. Yeah. So when you say you don't eat pork, people assume automatically you're yeah, Muslim. Exactly. Yeah, yes. not, yeah. So you stop 
stopped eating pork, do you know what happened? And then, like, this year, just before Christmas, I was watching, like, yourself, yeah. and Bro Hamza, okay. and Free Muslims, my channel, yeah? and your channel, <laughs> and I was watching, like, One Islam, and I was watching about six to eight hours a day. I mean, I, I was watching a lot of content. Okay. I suppose it's better than binging Netflix or something. Absolutely. Which, you know, I mean? Absolutely. So, uh, Absolutely. I was taking all this in, and I was like, wow, this book contains so many miracles, and it's so many booming things, and all these people are saying the same thing and it matches up and I was like well it's obviously like the, the truth you know and, oh it's yeah. so then you, basically it was for you you came across the videos you binge watched the videos and you came to the conclusion that Islam is the truth based on what you heard in the videos right so the evidences that we've been put and everything like that right yeah. so this was your process right I, I know a little bit like previously when I went to Iraq yeah. did you read the Quran that time or I think I've read about uh, about a third of it so third of it way, way, way. before you became Muslim um, I read about 50 or 60 page before I came Muslim. Mashallah, okay. So, and the, the English, obviously, not, not, not the Arabic. Obviously. Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, the translation, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Translation. And then, how did you take your shahada? Uh, we Hamza on YouTube. Oh, yes. mashallah. Yes, uh, so, did you go on his stream and then you took a shahada with him? Uh, I went on his stream first for like uh, about 10 minutes and I was asking questions a little bit and he was like, and I'd pretty much made my mind up by that point anyway. Well, you're so, already a Muslim so in a way, like, yeah. yeah. And he was like, well, just take it. But I had a Christmas dinner for the veterans at the place I live. Okay. And I was worried in case what things were there. And yes, people yes. Saw, and I wanted to be more comfortable in it myself. Absolutely, before. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I went down to the archery the other day, and I had my Turkish hat on, and obviously the beard. And this guy, who I've known for like a couple of years, he says, you look like a Muslim. He says, why are you looking like a Muslim? I says, well, that's because I am. And he says, oh, good answer. <laughs> so I cannot even imagine how that situation is. But for you, I'm sure you get that. Uh, one day, I'll tell you a funny story. One day, one person was here, for, he was from Syria, Levantine, right? Yeah. And he is, he is pale, his skin is pale. Yeah. He's standing with us, and two English people, they were drunk, right? They came, they said, what are you doing with them? You're one of us. <laughs> well, he's coming here, you know? We started, he even started laughing, you know? Yeah. And they were drunk, but this, people got this perception. They think that uh, a Muslim is Arab, or Muslim is Asian, or yeah, Muslim is Muslim, and you can be from any background, and you're the living example of that, right? Yeah. You took, you, you made your own decision. You just watch your material, you read the Quran, you made your own choice, you wanted to become Muslim, right? Yeah. I think it's only like 18% of like Arabs are, uh, are Muslims, some sort of statistic uh, like 80% to are non, uh, oh, Muslims are non-Arabs. They're not Arabs. 20% only are Arabs. Yeah, that's what I yeah, yeah, yeah. said. Yeah, oh, sorry, so I said 18%. So oh, 18, no, no. 20, oh, yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you said 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I heard. But uh, I think yes. the biggest uh, Islamic country is probably Indonesia. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. The, the biggest yeah. population of Muslims are not, are not Arabs, yeah. right? And and that shows that this religion is, has nothing to do with being an Arab or not being an Arab, right? Yeah. And he's just reading the Quran, seeing that the Quran teaches you, saying to you that Prophet Muhammad is a messenger to everyone, right? Yeah. That he's a mercy to all mankind. Yeah. He's to everyone that this book is a mercy to humanity, the guidance to humanity, right? So, reading the Quran is, is clear, yeah. and I don't think you're gonna really find any other messenger in history is well known that claimed to be for everyone, anyway. Yeah. Moses didn't claim that, Jesus didn't claim that, Abraham didn't claim that, right? But Prophet Muhammad did claim that, he yeah. said that he's a messenger sent to everyone, right? Everyone. So, like so, race, yes. like so how was your experience since you started becoming Muslim? Uh, Learning how to pray and yeah, um, I've got that app which I use, uh, and uh, but I'm getting to the point. So you've done it so many times a day for however long. Yes. I, I know the, the, the Kira in Arabic. I can say, and when I do me, when I, I start to do the Tasha with it, but I, I read it this way with the Arabic as I'm doing. So at least I've learned a little bit of like script and things. But yeah. I'll, I'll try to and how long ago? How long ago did you come to? Uh, Christmas Day. Christmas. This the last last year or this year? Uh, this this year. So just it's just literally <laughs> a month, less than a month ago, right? Yeah, and so I'm, I'm you already wearing mashallah uh, Islamic clothing. You. <laughs> you were shocking me. I thought that's subhanallah. Because some people are subhanallah like, like you. Some people are too, are sincere about their actions, right? The minute they become Muslim, some sisters, the minute they become Muslim, they wear the niqab. An English sister, she becomes Muslim. Two weeks later, she comes she comes to us with the niqab. Yeah. And we shock subhanallah, she's wearing a full burqa, full niqab. Yeah. They take it more seriously, and you, you take it more seriously because you've seen the opposite. You've seen the other perspective, right? You've you seen drunk in clubs. Absolutely. And so did you uh, did you manage to memorize Fatih Hayat or so the first chapter? Did you manage to memorize Fatih? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman Rahim, or not yet? Uh, not yet. 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 Not y
الحياه ياك ياك انا عبدو ما شاء الله يا سيس ما شاء الله يدي يدي ما شاء الله والله ام هابي ام هابي ذس از فيري امبورتنت بيكوز ات شوز ذات لايك سم بيبل جوت ذس بيرسبشن ذات اوه بيبل فورس مسلمز فورس ذا ريليجن اون بيبل ان ذس يو كيم اكروس ذا ريجن باي يور سيلف يو ديسايد تو بيكم مسلم باي يور سيلف رايت اند ات از جود فور بيبل تو سي اند ليرن ذات الاسلام از لايك ذات يو نو اسلام از ا ريليجن ذات از فور ايفري ون اند اند اف يو ار سينسير يو اكشلي دو يور ريسيرش لايك يو ديد يو سي ذات ذا ايفيدنسز ار مور كومبيلينغ ذان اني ثينغ ايلس يو ويل هاف تو ليد يو تو ذا فاكت ذات ذس از ذس از فور جاد رايت ذس از ذا تروث وي شود اول بي ادوبتينغ اند اكسبتينغ اند ات از فيري انتريستينغ وي سينغ ذات بيينغ ان ذا ارمي اند ذس اند ذات بيينغ ان ذا ارمي توداي يعني اوتوماتيكلي اند اي جوت ا لوت اوف بيبل فروم ذا ارمي اند سربرايزينغ ليفز دي دونت وونت تو دو وات ذي تيل ذيم تو دو ان ذا ارمي اند وين ذي كم ذي كم ذي ريلي انتريستد ان اسلام اي جوت ا لوت اوف بيبل فروم ذا ارمي لايك ذات يو نو سو ات اتس فيري انتريستينغ يو نو اند I appreciate you telling us your story and everything like that. You know, what a lovely, what a lovely. Okay, when you look at like uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Um, I think he went on something called the, the Majal, where he went through like he heard the angels in space, etc. Yes, yes, yes. And like NASA said the robot. Yes. Are you actually here? Because he used to think that oh, it's all dead silent in the, the darkness of space, and it's not. You know. Yeah, actually, the, 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 the can hear sounds of planets yeah. and sounds of certain stars and this. And you can, there is new technology now. Where you can actually hear planets, yeah. hear the sound of planets and things like that. You know, yeah, it's so it's absolutely it's fascinating. And and this is the point. You know, you, with your brothers, I'm sure you already know that. You know, anything you need, we're here. You know how to contact us, right? You need anything from us, yeah. I mean, we're welcome, mashallah. And Allah, I'm happy, yeah. and we, inshallah, we'll see you again. You know, I don't want to take too much of your time, though. You know, barakallah fiqh. I'll see you, inshallah. Yeah, barakallah fiqh. Barakallah fiqh for telling me. Sorry, yeah. That means goodness be with you. Yeah? Just yes. Kind of, yeah. Barak Allah. I just learned that from Adi Al Haq the other day, and asked because uh, I'm off to do my uh, Umrah. Mashallah. Uh, after Ramadan, I didn't want to overload myself, so I thought I'd do it. After. You're doing your Umrah, Mashallah. Yeah. Like when you go there, when you come back, let me know your experience because when you see Mecca, when you see the Kaaba, oh, when you see yeah. the feeling you will get there. Trust yeah. me, I'm, I'm telling you, it's something that I miss so much. You know. Thank um, you so much, bro. May Allah bless you, brother. Thank you.